Hey everyone, it's Joey Thurmond from Push Square, and I'm touching ground to tell you a little bit about Lawbreakers. It's a competitive multiplayer shooter from Boss Key Productions, which is led by none other than Cliffy B himself. And I'm sure you recognize the name since it's attached to famous franchises like Unreal Tournament and Gears of War. He originally retired from the game industry, but he had an itch to develop that couldn't be sated until he returned and made something again. That's why he and his team have been working on Lawbreakers for the past few years. And while it was originally going to be a PC exclusive, which makes sense uh, since it's an arena shooter, it's actually arrived on the PlayStation 4 this week as well. But does the game stand a chance against other shooters of its kind? Before I tell you if that's the case or not, I'd just like to remind any viewers to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. But in all seriousness, only do so if you think we deserve it. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk Lawbreakers. When it comes to me personally, I would say my first-person shooter experiences have mostly been casual and solo. I'm prone to stick with uh, single-player campaigns and the likes of Call of Duty and Battlefield for my multiplayer. So when it comes to arena shooters and more competitive shooters like Team Fortress 2 and Quake and Unreal Tournament, I've only dipped a little bit in those kind of things. But I have gotten obsessed with Overwatch, as most people have over the past year and a half now. And if you're going into Lawbreakers thinking that it's like Overwatch, which many people have uh, said, you're not going to have a good time <laughs> because uh, Lawbreakers is way faster and the way that teams work together and how you're supposed to play is completely different. So allow me to explain. If you've played Overwatch, and I hope that you do play this way, you know that it's very important to have balanced team compositions and to stick with your team at all times because classes are meant to complement one another. I mean, if you have a Reinhardt, he's going to be with his team the entire time and relying on them to do the offensive and supportive work. Whereas someone like Mercy is not even focusing on doing damage whatsoever but attending to each teammate's needs in terms of healing. But with Lawbreakers, a class like the Battle Medic isn't expected to stay back because you can wield a grenade launcher and pistol and do pretty much the same amount of offensive damage as any other class. And that goes for the Juggernaut class as well. You wield a shotgun and can deploy a shield to protect your teammates, but it's more of a temporary, uh, stationary shield than one you can carry around. So really, you're more effective moving around like everybody else. So the point is that uh, Lawbreakers doesn't really need highly coordinated teamwork or heavily specialized roles when you play. It's very much a reactive, chaotic first-person shooter where you just go around and try to kill whoever you can. And I think one thing that really aids the kind of quick movement and chaos that Lawbreakers is going for is uh, some of the features in its maps. And one of the central things that it advertises are these anomalies, uh, which are central parts of the maps where gravity is low. So when you enter them, you can go up, down, left, and right really fast and these areas are where a lot of the most fun encounters occur. Not only do all the classes have great weapons that are fun to use that are mostly balanced, <laughs> um, they also have a lot of ways to get around the environment such as the Vanguard who has a jetpack that can send it flying faster than pretty much any other class in the game, which is a lot of fun in the low gravity areas. Uh, the same goes for the Wraith, who can uh, do a really long slide and follow it up with a jump that's much higher than most other characters. And even the Titan, which is very limited in mobility, can use its rocket launcher to jump up into the air and actually propel itself forward in the low gravity areas. 
And this is especially helped with a mechanic that any class can use called blind fire, which allows you to maybe shoot someone that's following you from behind, or to actually direct your movement in the low gravity areas. I think it's one of the neatest mechanics in the game. But when it comes to the actual uh, gravity in these maps, I wish the implementation of it was a bit more creative. I think it'd be neat to see some maps that are entirely in low gravity. Uh, I'd like to see gravity maybe increasing or decreasing in intensity uh, during certain points in a match. And I'd like to see smaller, more specific instances of these anomalies around maps. And it'd be cool if they were larger too, to have maybe like a specific pathway that used to be a bridge, but it's completely decimated now and there's nothing but the low gravity to keep you in the air, but it's a place of heavy traffic. So I think there's a lot of potential in Lawbreakers for how it can make a lot more exhilarating situations with this feature in its maps that really is one of its most unique draws. When it comes to the modes, there are five at the moment. Uh, two are uplink and overcharge that involve both teams trying to bring an object back to base that must be defended for a certain amount of time, and both of them slightly differ in how they function. Uh, Turf War is a neat spin on Domination, where both teams have to secure three points, and once they're locked down, they're locked down. And then they reset over and over again until the score limit is reached. So it's like a whole bunch of tiny matches of Domination in one game. Occupy, similar to Call of Duty's Headquarters, and Blitzball, which is one of my favorite modes, is akin to Capture the Flag. But all of them have these small twists that make them a little unique, such as the ball exploding in Blitzball in the player's possession if they don't reach the enemy base in time. The ball is also voiced by Justin Rowland, which is very funny. And I'm sure you're wondering, what do I get for leveling up each time? And the answer to that is a stash drop, which is pretty much the same way a loot box functions in Overwatch. The stuff you earn is purely cosmetic and you can buy them if you want, but you get them frequently enough uh, to the point where you don't really have to worry about it unless you're really into the game. You can get skins, stickers, useless stuff like customizable boot patterns, because when you kick enemies in the game, you'll actually see like a boot imprint on the screen and you can make that look however you wish with a whole bunch of different variants. But I don't really care for a lot of these things because I don't really see myself investing in the characters a lot. And I think it speaks for the fact that a lot of them aren't really distinguishable and iconic as Team Fortress 2 or Overwatch's cast. There are a couple skins I might like to get my hands on, but the main problem is that the realistic style combined with the irreverent tone of the game leaves a lot of the character design, voice lines, and some of the overall direction of the game feeling conflicted with some characters and personalities not matching up at all. Here's an example. Eternal darkness away. Another soul claim. And other characters just come across as generic, and that goes for some of the map design as well. It's hard to explain why I feel this way toward the game, but I just do, and it's something that's largely backed up by a lot of people's impressions of the game. However, that should not detract you from playing the game entirely, because the gameplay is very smooth, it feels great, and the overall balance of the classes, their diversity, the weapons they wield, the modes that you can play, Lawbreakers is a really great arena shooter, and you would be missing out if you judge the game by its visuals alone. And besides, that's not really the reason why people play arena shooters in the first place. They play them because they're exhilarating and a rush with the kind of reactive gameplay that they provide, and Lawbreakers succeeds on that front. I don't think Lawbreakers is an Overwatch killer because it's not really comparable to Overwatch. It's more of a great addition to the arena shooter scene. 
and I can definitely see it cropping up in some esports and developing a small devoted audience that is well deserved for a game that's well designed in turn. But do you think Lawbreakers will fade into obscurity or did I perhaps convince you to give it a go? Let me know in the comments section below and be sure to check out the written review on our website. Thanks for watching.